Hi, you've clicked on today's tropical tidbit for Wednesday. Over here in the Atlantic, the only glaring feature right now is Tropical Storm Maria moving north of the Caribbean. Now still a little bit of a partially exposed surface center here. Most of the thunderstorm activity east of the center. There's an upper level trough here, which is both ventilating her a little bit better, but also still shearing her apparently, so she's not able to balloon out the anticyclone and to get going in a good way. So she's probably not going to even make hurricane status here as she moves out. But she is going to be passing close enough to Bermuda to possibly bring some tropical storm conditions and then possibly getting very close to Newfoundland as well. I'm sorry I pronounced it wrong yesterday. It's Newfoundland, not Newfoundland. Me pronouncing it literally there. But she will be moving fairly close to these both areas, but she won't be too big of a deal. These folks have both dealt with weak tropical storms before, and Maria will not be, hopefully, a life-threatening storm for anybody up there. Now we're going to be talking next about the threats to come. We're still waiting on more tropical waves in the eastern Atlantic. Those will just be a wait and see kind of deal. If we're going to talk about threats to land that might have to cause some worry, we're going to be looking for the Caribbean. And right now it's very dry and very quiet because Marie is up here. And uh, storms north of the Caribbean kill the Caribbean. That's a fact. So we have to wait until Maria gets out. And then, of course, as we all know right now, the United States is getting very cold in the south and east right now. And tonight there's supposed to be temperatures greater than 20 Celsius below normal in the center of the country, and it's going to be getting very cold there. As well, the southwest Atlantic waters are getting cold because of Katia and Maria, who have recurved out, and Irene as well from a couple weeks back. So the water in here is getting cold. The country's getting cold in here. This implies that the air is getting denser, and we're having net high pressure developing over these areas, which is forcing air down to the south. It spreads out in all directions, but some of it comes south and converges down in the Caribbean over warm water, and so we can start to get low pressure down here eventually within the next week or two. And the models are still up and down with this. We have the no gaps that shows a storm in seven to eight days in the northwest Caribbean, and you know, this is the no gaps. So we can't really trust it a whole lot here. It is offering a little bit of support, but it tends to wind up West Caribbean systems easier than other models. The GFS 0Z showed something in here. The 6C dropped it. It's been on and off with that. The European has now completely dropped any sort of storm in here and now just shows broad low pressure and not that strong. Through day 10 it starts to raise the pressures and things look pretty dead out there, but its ensembles still hint at something, but it's not as strong of support as I would like to see. And what may happen though is eventually we could have the time period shift a little bit farther down than I thought it was going to be. My original target area for this was September 15th through 25th. We may be shifting that now to 20th through 30th and we're going to have to see how that goes because we have a pattern showing up on the models now where this is the GFS day 12. This is a pattern that could help us get a storm down here but it's out at day 12 instead of day 6 to 7 like it was forecasting before. We have one pulse and then we have a second pulse five to eight days later so we may have to wait a little bit longer so we may be back out to the 10 to 15 day period instead of only a week out now. Shifting forward a little bit I can handle that. We've been talking about this since the beginning of the month. I'm sure we can wait another five days and the good news is that if it's shifting around right now we may not get a storm and of course we don't really want to see a storm forming close to land here but what I want to show you guys is a bunch of storms that I went through and looked at that formed in the Western Caribbean and came up north or northeast in the Gulf of Mexico, Florida, or Bahamas areas. And I picked out the hurricanes. I ignored the tropical storms because they're inconsequential to most people, except unless they're flooding events. But in general, we want to know about the hurricanes and what patterns supported hurricanes. So if we start out at 1948, which is where our reanalysis starts, um, we have one of the great Florida hurricanes of the late 40s that came up into southwest Florida. And in that same year, we had a second hurricane a couple of weeks later that also came through southwest Florida. This was a major hurricane. We got to 1950, major hurricane easy, meandered north of Tampa Bay as a major hurricane and came into Florida. 1952, major hurricane Fox came through Cuba and the Bahamas as a major. And 1953, hurricane Florence came up through the Gulf and made landfall in Florida as a hurricane. 1956, Hurricane Flossie came into the Central Gulf, made landfall in Louisiana and Florida as a hurricane. Major Hurricane Isbel in 1964 hit South Florida as a major hurricane out of the Southwest. 1968, Hurricane Gladys also into Florida. 
Now we jump out all the way to 1987. Hurricane Floyd, not the big Floyd, but little Floyd, came into South Florida as a hurricane. 1995, you guys know this one, Hurricane Opal came up into Florida as a major hurricane. 1996, Hurricane Lily came across and into the Bahamas right before becoming a major hurricane. 1999, Hurricane Irene came out of the Caribbean into Florida as a hurricane and brushed North Carolina as a cat too. Hurricane Gordon in 2000 came into Florida as a tropical storm after being a hurricane west of Tampa. 2001, Hurricane Michelle late October moved into Cuba as one of their big major hurricanes. And you guys know this one. Last but not least, Hurricane Wilma, Cat 5 in the Caribbean, came into South Florida as a major Cat 3 and continued out to sea there to the northeast. And that's a whole slew of storms. That was 15 storms there that I just went through. Now, the interesting thing about this is you notice the similarities. Hopefully you can see the pattern that I'm trying to generate here with all these storms forming in the Caribbean and then coming north or northeast into the Florida area. And we have a whole bunch of these spread out. Now, if we take the formation dates of each and every one of these storms and plug it into the reanalysis maps and look at the 500 millibar height pattern, we get this, which I showed you guys yesterday. Big mammoth trough over Alaska, big ridge over the northern plains, and then a trough down into New England, and of course the breeding ground down in the Caribbean, which yields a temperature pattern, which I forgot to scroll up to, of this in here. Of course, very warm and blowtorch over the west and central of the country and cold along the east. And now if we look at the upper le upper level pattern that we have forecasted for day 12 from the GFS, which I just showed you, big trough over Alaska, ridge over the northern plains, trough into New England, which yields a temperature pattern that looks like this. Warm blowtorch over the west and central part of the country and then cool along the eastern seaboard, which looks a lot like that. See the similarities there? They're not quite as cold, but it is cool in here with the warmth off to the west. It looks a whole lot like what this looks like, this pattern in here. So we can see what's going on. This is a similar pattern to where we've seen storms that come out of the Caribbean and move into the Gulf, Florida, or Bahamas area. Now there's an important, port, import, important point to be made here when we're making comparisons. Two-way relationships don't always exist. For example, just because this pattern usually exists whenever we have a storm that does this, it doesn't mean that whenever we see this pattern, we will get a storm that does this. It doesn't work like that. We can get this pattern much of the time and not have a storm down here. However, what I'm looking for is hints to see if we can figure out this pattern and come up with some logical reasons for a forecast that makes sense. And I've been talking about how pressure should rise due to cold air forming over the eastern part of the country, forming high pressure, which incubates the Caribbean with converging air. And it just so happens that if we look at this and then we turn on the sea level pressure anomalies, check it out. They're higher than normal during this pattern, which makes sense because the air is colder, and this supports the idea that when the air is cold over the east, the pressure is higher, and supports the Caribbean development that we saw in this pattern in the past. And if we scroll down, you can see where the formation occurred, where pressures were lower because pressures were higher to the north and here. So this pattern goes along with this, which goes with this, which goes with what we're seeing on the GFS and some of the other ensembles, and then it's temperature pattern that's forecasted for day 12 through 15 as well. So so we may have to watch this pattern. It's not a guarantee that we're going to see development, but I think we're going to at least attempt it, and I think we're going to see the Caribbean showing mischief down here. And it may be a little bit later than I thought. Originally, again, my window was through the 25th. I may have to extend that through the end of the month. So we're probably now looking at the last 10 days of September. But this is a classic late season pattern where we shift from a hot summer to a cool break in the eastern United States. And we may have to watch this area for a storm that tries to develop and either moves into the Yucatan or comes north into Cuba, the Bahamas, or Florida or the Eastern Gulf, similar to all of these storms that we saw way back in the past that did the same thing under the same kind of pattern. That's what we're doing here and looking to try to make a forecast that makes sense. We'll just have to keep watching this area for the next couple of weeks. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.